Hey, this is Jay, and this is a quick tutorial for automatically transcribing video using self-hosted NADN and Whisper running in Docker. Um, so this actually comes directly from a comment left on one of my other Whisper videos asking for this specific workflow of running Whisper in a Docker container and accessing it through HTTP request. So that's what we're going to do in this one. Um, I've had a couple other videos about um, running Whisper. Uh, we've used the, the Whisper API, so uh, that is convenient, but it comes with the restriction of uh, not being able to use files bigger than 25 megabytes, which can, you know, that's not a huge amount of data, um, or, and you have to pay for it, or being able to run Whisper locally directly on your machine. Um, so you just have to install Python, and then you can run uh, the pip command from the Whisper repository to install Whisper locally, and then you can run the Whisper command to be able to transcribe. Um, but this was kind of nice because Docker then actually allows you to, to not have to deal so much with uh, managing a Python and that kind of thing. Um, you can just wrap it all up into one Docker image. Uh, and so once you've got Docker installed, uh, which you would need to do for this, just need to get Docker up and running. Um, you can just run two commands, um, which I will have available. So I'm actually going to include the entire repo here. Uh, just a really simple repository that will help you run this Docker image. Um, and it's just, again, just a, it's a Docker container that will have the Whisper service running inside of it. Uh, but that way you can access it through an HTTP request. Um, so I will have that available um, along with the workflow uh, in a link in the description. Uh, but in this case, uh, that's what we're going to do here. We're going to uh, get that container running and then access it through a workflow. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get started on that. Let's jump over to the terminal. Um, and again, we are running self-hosted in ADN. And the biggest benefit for running self-hosted in ADN, uh, well, at least one of them, is for the in ADN default uh, binary data mode equals file system flag. Um, so if you've got that set to file system, that gives NADN access to your entire system's memory. Um, if you were to go use NADN in, in the cloud, so use their their hosted service from their website, um, they're definitely going to restrict the file size that you can work with. But if you're running it on self-hosted like this and you give it file system, uh, it can use your entire system memory. So you could uh, transcribe a two-hour podcast. As long as it'll fit in your system memory, you're good to go. So we're going to go ahead and start running local hosted in ADN. All right, so that's up and running. And I'm going to go ahead and refresh this so we can reconnect. All right, and so uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and delete all this, and we're going to start over from scratch. So we are running self-hosted in ADN, so I'm going to run uh, our first trigger as local file. So we're going to trigger off of a uh, local file trigger, and then we're going to do on changes involving a specific folder. So... Uh, let me jump over to that. So I am running N8N in a folder called N8N local. Uh, and then inside of that, uh, just to keep things a little bit more organized, I'm, I've created a local whisper folder. Uh, so inside of local whisper folder, this is going to be what we're going to be working with uh, for this particular workflow. Um, so what I want to do is actually look for a trigger on the this input folder. So I'm going to look for local whisper slash input. And so if something happens, if we add a file to that folder, that will trigger this workflow. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to drag my test video in. And there we go. So we got the trigger from the input folder. So now we have the name of the file, uh, the, the video file. Uh, so next, uh, we need to actually read the file because that's just the name. So we're going to do a read write files from disk node. And we're going to read files from disk. Uh, so this will give us the actual binary data of the video uh, that we just dropped. So we are good to go there. We can just drag that path in. And now we've created a data binary for it. Okay, so we have the file now uh, that's ready to be sent into Whisper. Um, so now we have to access Whisper. Um, so like I said, you would actually have Docker already installed, uh, hopefully at this point. So um, I'm going to jump over to Cursor. You can just run it in whatever terminal you want. Um, but what we're going to do is run just two Docker commands. And like I mentioned, let's go ahead and pull up the pretty version. So if you download the repo, um, you will have something like this. And we just need to run these two commands. Yeah, don't, we don't have to do anything else besides run these commands within the project. Um, but we're going to run a Docker build. So this is what creates the Docker image that we're going to run. So we're going to grab this command of Docker build. Uh, the dash T is for tag, and we're going to uh, tag this container as whisper dash API. Uh, and then the dot just tells it to run the Docker build command within the context of the current project. Um, and then it will it, uh, automatically end up finding this Docker file, which tells it how to build it. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do that. And hopefully, when you run it the first time, it's probably going to take like a minute. Uh, it's going to take a, uh, way longer than that. I've, I've already run it. So uh, just expect it to take some time. 
Um, so once it's done building though, um, it should look, uh, your terminal should stop. And then just have to run one more command where it built the image. Now we have to actually run it. Um, so we're going to do Docker run, uh, dash P is for the port. Um, so I've just kind of arbitrarily have it running on uh, port 5001. Um, and so the, the, we're, the colon is for, you know, the internal. So 5001 is for the internal container of where the, the port we're using inside of Docker. And then, uh, the, the second, uh, second 5001 is to say how to access that container from the outside, which is what we're going to be doing. Um, but the 5001 is kind of arbitrary. Uh, and then the whisper dash API is what we tagged in the beginning. So that just tells it that that's the one we want to, we want to run. Uh, so if we run that command, uh, <laughs> there's no, there's not a lot of logging happening in my, happening in my code. Uh, so you won't really get too much feedback. Uh, ideally you won't get an error like this. Like it'll just run. Um, you could potentially, uh, get an error if something else is using that port, like I said. Uh, so if, if it throws an error and says like, there's a bind exception or whatever that like 5,001 is already in use. Um, you could go try to find whatever is using that port and kill it, or you could just change this. You can just change this to whatever, 3,001 or 5,002. And so as long as, if you change that, just change the command to match. So if you change it to 3,001, change this to be 3,001 colon 2,001. So, uh, hopefully, hopefully you don't run into that though. You just run those two, two Docker commands. And now we have a Docker, uh, Docker container running and we can jump back to NADN. So once Docker is running, uh, doesn't look like much is happening, but we are going to access it in the background with HTTP request. So with the HTTP request node, we are going to do a post method um, because we need to send in some data. And we're going to, so this, the, the Docker image is running on localhost. Um, so just like self-hosted in and in. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is actually copy the localhost up here. And then uh, that injects HTTP colon backslash backslash. Uh, and then I'm going to change this to the 5001 port. Again, if you change the port, just make sure it matches. Um, and then there's one other thing here. Um, you won't have to do this. Uh, it'll be in the workflow if you end up copying the workflow. Uh, but it, it uh, the Whisper service is actually running on slash transcribe. Um, so we're going to make sure that we call slash transcribe. And so that's good. Um, we're running it locally. So we're pretty lax on the authentication here. Uh, if you were to upload this to, you know, AWS or something, then you're going to have like a whole different URL for that. But, uh, and then probably need to set up some sort of authentication there, depending on how you have it configured. Uh, but we're running self-hosted, so we're good. Um, there is one send header that we're going to do. So, or one header we need to include. So we're going to send headers for uh, just content type. So we're going to grab content type is the name. That's good. And then the value is multi-part form data. So grab that multi-part slash form data, put that in for the value and headers are good there. And then we need a body because we are doing a post method. So we are not using a JSON because we just said we're using content type of form data. Uh, it just makes it a little easier to deal with the file, but we are not using the parameter type of form data. We're going to use uh, NADN's binary data file so it can automatically know, hey, I've already got the binary data. This is the data to include. Um, so we do need a name for that though. And again, um, this is all in the code. You won't have to do this if you copy this, but uh, we're going to grab file name is the parameter. And then uh, input data field name is just the one that's already here. So NADN handles that for us. You just call it data, uh, which is very convenient. So that's it for this. This should be our good, uh, good to go HTTP request to hit the Docker image. So let's go ahead and hit test. And there we go. So Basically, it, it, you would immediately see an error if something went wrong. You 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 would see it here. Um, you probably would also see it in uh, the terminal or wherever you're running your Docker commands. Um, so again, I I don't have a ton of logging. It would probably be useful to to actually add some logs in here just so you can kind of see what's happening. Uh, but in this case, ideally, you won't see an error in the in the terminal here or there. Um, and then, uh, as far as we can tell, though, uh, it is uh, hopefully transcribing our video. Um, when I built this, it is using, uh, so it's using Whisper Small. Uh, so just to kind of help it run a little bit more efficiently, um, it's not going to be as fast or it's what well, it actually should be a little bit faster since we are doing some virtualization here. Like we've wrapped the, you know, the Docker container is running inside of your machine. Um, so it's not going to be as quick as if you were just running it directly. Uh, so that's why we're kind of going with small to make it a little bit more efficient. Uh, but it also will make it not as uh, accurate. So the transcripts won't be as good. Um, I There's a couple other projects out there for like Whisper Faster. And then I think there's actually like a, an improved Whisper Transcribe. 
Um, so that's that's definitely on my list for later, um, just because this one is going to be transcribing by each segment. So basically like sentence eff- uh, effectively. Um, but for like captions and stuff, if you want to do like fancier uh, subtitles and captions, um, we would need Whisper's uh, word option instead, where it actually gives you a timestamp of each word. So you can try to emphasize each word as it's spoken. Um, so I, w- I want to look into that in the future to be able to get some better quality uh, subtitles or captions. Um, but for now, this this container is just running small. But again, if you wanted uh, to change that, you can. You could actually just come in here and change the Docker file to run a you know the base model or the large model. Um, but uh, in the meantime, it looks like uh, it is good to go. So you, uh, we do see a post 200. So that's from the the Docker logs itself, and can see success in in it uh, as well. So this would be the entire text uh, from uh, from the transcript, and then also includes the segmented where it gives you timestamps for when the things are being said. Uh, so cool. So we've successfully transcribed video through a Docker image. Uh, just to wrap this up, I mean, you can kind of do whatever you want with it at this point. Basically, the first thing we're going to need to do is convert. Uh, yeah, so we're going to convert this JSON data into binary data. So we want to actually create a file out of it. Um, at least that's what I'm going to do here. Uh, you wouldn't have to do that. If you wanted to, you know, if your next next thing was to maybe create, you know, uh, social media posts or whatever, you could just call uh, you know, open AI or, you know, if you have deep seek, if you're trying to go completely local. Um, but, uh, in this case, I'm just going to write it to a file just so we can use it later. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do convert to text file, uh, and then text input. And I'm actually going to change over here on the, the input side from the table tab to the schema tab. And I'm just going to grab the text and write it in. And then we should be good to go on that. We could, I mean, you could write the whole thing in the, into the file, depending on what you want to do. So if you're looking for segments, you could just write all the segments into the file instead. Um, but there's the entire transcript. So if you just wanted the transcript from a video, you could do that. Uh, and then the last thing would be to, uh, in this case, we're creating a file. So let's go ahead and write the file to the disk. So we've created the binary. Um, we just need to write uh, the file to disk. So do a read, write files from disk and then write file to disk. Uh, and then in this case, I mean, you can call it whatever you want. Uh, like I, I was doing local whisper uh, is our root folder and then slash and then whatever you want to call it. So like input that text. Um, technically, I guess you probably want to make this more dynamic. So really you could like grab, um, you guys should like grab the the name of the file and then create a folder for it. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and, and write the input uh, or whatever. Uh, do caption or uh, transcript dot text uh yeah so that will create a text file that then contains uh the transcript from the video we just did and we'll just double check that there's actually something in there and that looks like a a transcript um so there we go uh that's not too bad so again like i said like and that uh, that is one thing that we could we could probably approve right away it's going to dump this into the transcript file so if you keep running this it's going to keep overriding the the text file so really you probably would want to create like a folder um at the beginning so maybe like here uh we would say uh execute command yeah and then do make directory uh i'm gonna grab the path and let's see so i'm gonna do dot replace um we're gonna replace input slash with nothing and do another replace. So replace um, dot mp4 with a slash. All right there we go. Cool. So then that would give us a folder uh, to actually dump this text file into. And yeah, there we go. Uh, okay. And then we could actually change that last part to then write to that folder instead. So we could do uh, whatever the you grab the the video name and then and then write it in instead. So uh, I'm not going to do that just because it's going to take <laughs> a few minutes to go through the transcript again. Um, but anyway, hopefully that uh, that gives you an idea of running Whisper in a container uh, and then accessing it through HTTP request. So uh, thank you for the comment. Uh, really appreciate the suggestions. Of uh, if you have any other workflows you'd like to see like this or any other recommendations, please let me know or any of the other uh, any other questions or concerns. Um, in the meantime, I hope this was helpful. Um, again, I will have links for um, the workflow and for the repository um, so that you can get this whole thing running. 
and let me know if you run into into any issues with that though if you do try to uh get this up and running so uh thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one